of the Papua New Guinea women's team. So excited to see them in the competition. Of course, the Papua New Guinea Hunters in the Host Plus Cup, such a, a tough team to play against, and there'll be no doubt the women are the same as they take on New South Wales country here as their first possession with ball in hand. Interesting what sort of style they play, Papua New Guinea. A lot of natural athletes, but also some bigger bodies as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think that, you know, there's different sorts of competitions and different game styles that all of these nations and, and states are playing that are really all on display. So excited to see uh, what PNG can bring to the table. There's Grace Saar in the number nine jersey. She is the little general organising the runners. So Papua New Guinea now outside the third. That one's gone through the hands there from Awoi. So now New South Wales country will have their first chance with ball in hand. A team full of talent and different diversity of different sports and cultures. It's great to see for New South Wales country. So they have a chance now with ball in hand through Rebecca Smythe. In 13 jersey takes it. Inside the 30 on the attack now. Short side play through Abbott. Tips it on nicely there to Ryan. And Ryan out of the Western Rams. She'll play it. Good interchange of passing. And the contact there was brutal. Chest on chest there. As Alicia Erzman will play it. Great school set of passing, but that one just losing control of it. At the final hurdle. And we'll come back for the knock on. But I was going to say, New South Wales country, some real good patterns of play the way they want to shift the ball. Yeah, they certainly know how to shift. And we haven't seen this this early on in any of the games yet. And considering it's the first game that these two teams have played, really impressive start for New South Wales country. But also on the back end of that, great defence from Papua New Guinea. Just getting off that line and meeting them for every play and forcing the error. The captain, Gail Manolvi, she'll feed it in. And comes out clean there for Kuwawa. Number 17 in the starting pack today. Another tough carry up the middle as well. Golden Bell there playing the ball. So Papua New Guinea just getting some confidence in this opening two and a half minutes. Get some sequences going in attack. They looked at it, spread it wide. It's a wobbly old past. And it will bobble into touch. So it comes down the field for a play the ball. So both sides is feeling each other out in these early exchanges. Yeah, I think so too. I'm excited to see though what the New South Wales country do with another bite at the cherry. They've moved the ball a lot in the first uh, set they played. I'm sure we can expect that again. Rosaline Omali, Samoan Heritage, representing New South Wales country today. And look for her to have a big impact on this game through the middle. Roy Huppy takes it. Now left-hand side. Good jamming defence there from Papua New Guinea. Rolanda Talti up in the face. But here come New South Wales country. Playing with plenty of confidence. Here she is again. Al Mali. Great inroads. Options right-hand side going to the line. Here's Smythe. Tips it on. Good passing there. Out to Abbott. But she gets cleaned up and a good shot over the top there from Aram. Fifth and final now for New South Wales Country. Looking for the first score. Good offload ability out to Coleman. Looks left and comes back right. It's frantic stuff here at Pizzy Park. But Papua New Guinea will do enough. Great defence from PNG. Forcing the turnover. And they'll get plenty of confidence out of that. Yeah, great defence. I saw the three Ether. Ether, Aram and also the 13 in there. That's Deborah Katipa. For Papua New Guinea just wrapping that New South Wales country player right round. If they're going to get points, it's not going to be made easy for them. Yeah, great hustle on their own line. So now they need to work their way in attack. Grace Saar drops it back underneath. 
Not much room to work with there. It's Piper Rankmore for New South Wales Country. Gets a hold of it. So Papua New Guinea looking to spread wide. Look at the outside defenders of country getting up in the face. Just jamming hard. Yolanda Talti with the carry. Sa once again goes to her boot. It's not a bad one either. She bangs it downfield through the middle. So now bringing it back. There's someone who's got some fancy footwork. Good defense coming up in the face. Deborah Kittipa making the tackle. There on Ava Glassy. Tipa loves the contact. She's been in absolutely everything. Alana Ryan taking it up and now trying to get to an edge. Oh, Molly busy. In his opening six minutes. Still looking for her opening score in game number five. Left hand side. Good passing skills and now. A good run as well, trying to get the hands free on the inside. Can't do so from Vea. It's there for Coleman. Now to Smythe. Good quick hands and just snatching out there was Carly Abbott. We were playing advantage for the penalty offside the call against Papua New Guinea. A bit too eager there. Yeah, a little bit too keen on their defence, which they've been really great at. But I've got to do a special special mention to the captain, Rebecca Smythe. She's been exceptional in this first half. And, you know, you can see why she is the captain. She's one of the older heads, but the maturity of the game and her sort of uh, a game IQ as well, I think is really going to help. Here she goes, winding up, almost goes straight over the top. And there's a tough carry there from El Marley. And now close quarter, here's the 13. Smythe, there's the opportunity, and there's the try. Carly Abbott, first points for New South Wales country. Some great early points, as we'll see in that replay, but there she is, the 13, the captain, Smythe. She just turns, eyes up to find the number six, Abbott, waiting patiently for the ball. Four points on Papua New Guinea. But I swear everything, uh, the number 13, the captain Smythe touches, turns to gold at this point. The offload ability for the whole team so far has been good. That post-contact offload has been causing all sorts of headaches for Papua New Guinea early on. I think just in the, in the competition in general as well and, you know, in the broader, in the broader code of um, NRLW and, you know, women's competitions, the post-contact offload has certainly put some points on across the game. Sarah Coleman from right in front. Makes no mistake from there. And New South Wales country leading four points to nil. That replay again. There's the captain. This pass here. And captain she is. Wasn't an easy pass at all. She almost spun out of the Papuan player to find her number six. With space wide open, catching the Papuan girls on the back foot. Carly Abbott been very busy in the opening eight minutes. Abbott and Coleman, that combination is, is deadly in the halves. Yeah, I mean, the combination of all the playmakers, Abbott, Coleman and Smythe, in that lock position, uh, rare you see the sort of three playmakers all uh, communicating and setting up those combinations. But when you've got, you know, the maturity of Smythe in there, I think, you know, anything's possible. So here they go again, and that one around, I think around the neck looks a bit high. And yeah, she's got a looks like a bit of chat here from her assistant. So there's a penalty for New South Wales country. So where they go once again, Papa Rankmore. 
Plays it right on halfway. Smythe. Pass, and there's an absolute shot and a half. Papua New Guinea up in the face. Kawasaman making the tackle there. And no doubt this contest is physical, that is for sure. And there's an offload once again, keeping the ball alive. Coleman now through Smythe. Going to the line, summing it up. The situation, dummies and goes herself. Just short of the 10 now. She goes country, looking to go back to back here. Coleman, out to Abbott, she's got one. Out to rank ball, there's a money ball over the top and gliding her way through, but it's gone forward out of the hand, says the referee, and that must have been a close call. That's got to be just ill communication from the girls. There was two of them that went for the ball, but that's Abbott again, the half, and the playmaker, a little offload. Probably was forward. I think. Reaching for it. We'll back our referees. Back our referees. Who are doing a great job, I must say. Great to see the female representation as well across the park. You know, the great, the great game is growing outside of just the players, of the officials, the refs. Molawia feeds it, and that one's almost stolen. From Ava Glassy out of a cannon. She was launching for it. And Papua New Guinea do well to hold on to it. So the score remains six points to nil in this first half. If you are just joining us, go to have your company on NRL.com. This is day one of four. Plenty of action coming your way. It's been exciting day one action. Joseph, number 14, she will play there for Saar. Just the collisions and the turn of speed. They are not afraid of the contact, that is for sure. That was Kalpa on that occasion. They get to a kick to Papua New Guinea. It's, it's back there for Anna Dingley. So New South Wales country looking to... Offer some attack over Glassy. She's been busy early. You can just tell she just looks like an absolute athlete. A track star, if you will. Plenty of speed about Glassy. To Smythe, once again, standing at first receiver. Now for Coleman. Bit of a hand in there from Papua New Guinea. So we are playing advantage six again. So no advantage, we'll come back and reset. Momentum certainly starting to build for the New South Wales country team. They seem to be finding Papua New Guinea on the back foot quite a bit. I think it's because of their key playmakers and also Smythe who are just directing traffic left and right. It's really hard for Papua New Guinea to be able to judge where the attack and where you know the play is going to go. Yeah, Smythe in the middle. She is a true leader, really organising the outside backs, that's for sure. Zvea takes it up the middle. Now for Podmore. Gets a pass away and just holds on to it. Daniel Plummer. The 16 onto the field. So New South Wales country looking for a try number two. The defence is holding firm so far for Papua New Guinea. There's Coleman just soft hands on the outside. Zali Oyapi. Papua New Guinea pleading for it now. Very close to the line. Pushing, pumping the legs is Podmore. But no way... Right, no way through there. Great defence from Papua New Guinea. Smythe finds Coleman, goes to the skies. There's numbers of plenty. One of them, we've got to take it, and one of them does. Has it gone forward out of the hands? The referee's having a chat with her assistant. And it will be no try. This replay, uh, it touches Smythe first, goes back to the kicker. It's come off one. It's that combination again between it's come off, I think, Ryan before finding Dingley. 
So it's come forward, unfortunately. That's also the second time, though. So communication on that right wing, uh, it might be lacking a little bit. Yeah, someone need to talk there a little bit yep. more. But pinpoint kick, once again. Also, something I've noticed, though, the defence for Papua New Guinea, they're really starting to wrap the ball. They've, you know, identified that these New South Wales country girls love an offload and they're great at it. So great to see Papua New Guinea respond with wrapping the ball in defence. And full credit to Papua New Guinea. That's three or four times they've held them out now to keep them within grasp. Six points to nil. Just under seven minutes left in this opening term. So for a couple. Quick hands back underneath with the traffic. Koapa. She's hard to stop. Here's Gloria. Papua New Guinea can just score here. You can really tell the momentum could shift. And that's the way to do it. Up the middle through a couple. Getting something going. Great carry once again. Setting the tone. Glory Kaupa. She's been very illustrious in this first half. Keeping it alive this time through Pinder. Still on, says the referee. Play on's the call. The offload's a good one. Out to Arrow, onto the toe. Another kick for That one's gone in the arms of Dingley, and this could be trouble. She's got plenty of toe about her, and she brings it back outside the 30. You can see that replay in the corner there. They were close. Papua New Guinea, a little chip, but Dingley, it came off the face. And she found the open space. Thankfully, Papua New Guinea able to shut it down before she got any further. And just as we say that, Papua New Guinea will get another chance with ball in hand. We'll see that replay there. She's been exceptional in New South Wales country campaign. Ava Glassy, but the error is forced. So the ball will return to Papua New Guinea. Another bite at the cherry. Certainly hungry for work. RPNG getting heavily involved. And they'll run it from everywhere. Guasaman spills it out. The back door and the referee is saying that one's gone forward. So it's been struggling to build any real momentum for Papua New Guinea. So those errors appearing at the worst possible time. They've got the momentum in the middle and in their forward pack. They're just struggling to include their outside backs. That seems to be where the downfall begins. Uh, so maybe a bit more communication and work from the halves is needed. Because uh, the forwards, that forward pack is certainly putting in the work. And when it gets to the backs, they put in the work as well. It's just, yeah, maybe a, a chain of communication might be... Uh, struggling there a little bit for PNG. So Sarah Coleman spots an opportunity blindside, and here goes Ava Glassy, and she is an absolute athlete. And gets the offload in contact as well. Great play as Ryan has a crack, flicks it out of the back of the hand. And that one's towed off a Papua New Guinea foot, I believe. And the referee does agree, so New South Wales country will get possession once again. You can see one of the playmakers there, Carly Abbott, just telling the team to slow down as well. Play the footy they know. It certainly can, the momentum can build and, you know, it can get really fast paced, but that's when we see, we, we start to see the forced errors. So great insight from Carly Abbott, one of the leaders out there for New South Wales country. Speaking of leaders, Smythe. With ball in hand once again, just tips it on to Earsman, the former state swimmer. Smythe, once again, and just leaping into the contact there was Plummer. The 10 away, centre field. New South Wales country looking for their second blow. Smythe. And again, Earsman, a good carry, and the offload is even better. And that's try time for New South Wales country. Zali, why happy? She's a strong ball carrier, and you can see exactly why.
Yeah, certainly some nice points to round out the first here, uh, the first half here between New South Wales Country and PNG. As we see the replay here, like we said before, anything that Smart touches turns to gold, but the work isn't done. She finds her number 10, Earsman, and there's that lovely little offload, which has just been putting points on points during this competition. How's the pass? She's on one foot, just tops it over the top. She has about three Papua New Guinea defenders hanging off her, still finds the offload. But it's, it's interesting to see, um, like you mentioned before, Smythe was a swimmer. We had a hockey player before. So it's so exciting. I think as the great game of rugby league is growing, there's just women coming from all other sports, just wanting to get involved, loving the contact, the physicality of the game. And we seem to be yeah, taking from a lot of other sports. <laughs> and they're shining in the 13 women code. And no good on that occasion for the conversion. Score remains 10 points to nil. We see this one more time. Just watch this offload here from Earsman. She's on one foot, has to go over the top of one of the PNG players. Great skill. Final 60 seconds left in this first half. And Papua New Guinea, they can take plenty of confidence into this first half. You saw this country had all the possession. They'll, they'll trap down here and only concede the two tries. That's a win. That's a win, absolutely. And it's only the first half as well of the first game of the competition. I think if we, you know, when we come back tomorrow, I think that we can expect to see a completely different team. They've now had the 20 minutes experience, another 20 to come. Rebecca Smythe, a big first 20 from the 13. Podmore. Now across the face. And that one's a bit higher there on Earsman. And she wants to tap and go quickly. She's having a bumper first half. And this may be the last play of the first half as the siren sounds. And New South Wales country leading Papua New Guinea two tries to nil. 10-0 the score at halftime. We'll be back for the second half right after this. Welcome back to Game 5 action on day one of the Harvey Norman Women's National Championship. It's been a grinding first half between New South Wales country and Papua New Guinea. New South Wales country holding that slight lead, 10 points to nil. But Papua New Guinea, they've shown they're here to compete. Yeah, grind is exactly what the first half is, I'd say. In past games, we've seen quite a dominating first half. But, you know, 10 points in it, I think, is a testament to, to the sort of quality and uh, skill that both teams possess. I'm sure we'll see plenty of it in this second half. Absolutely, as New South Wales country begins their second half with Smythe in control, as she has been in that first term. She was so impressive, was Rebecca Smythe in the 13 jersey, and she has ball in hand right now as they go left-hand side, and winding up is Earsman. She gets put on her back, though, for her troubles. Good shot. As Coleman gets to her kick. New South Wales country in both rugby league and rugby union for Coleman. Talented prospect. To Papua New Guinea, bring it back. That side, their own 20. Good charge once again. They can catch New South Wales country on the back foot. That's where I think they can do their best work. And as we've seen, they have pace out wide. It's going to get it there. Yeah, they do. It's just that breakdown, I think, between the halves. We just need um, some louder voices, I would say, in the playmakers because the, the forward pack of the Papua girls has been impeccable. Someone's gone backwards, so play on, says the referee. And coming in, some good contact there with Xanthi Booth, number nine jersey for New South Wales country. So maintaining possession, but haven't made too many metres since the start of the set here for PNG. Need a good kick here. They go left-hand side. That's not a bad purchase down the middle. And eventually lands in the arms, and that was... Looked very high again, I thought, around the neck. The referee is going to let it go. 
on Caitlin Turnbull. The Australian Oztag player. And again, this time, the penalty does go the way. And the referee may need a chat here eventually. The discipline and the high shots are getting up there. Yeah, it's, con it's, it's consistent at this point. You know, if it's one or two, I think, you know, that you can sort of place that down to a little bit of a mistake or a little bit of... But now it's, you know, ill-discipline. And the, the PNG girls really need to watch that. Both with ball in hand. Taps and goes to Zali Oihapi. She got the second try in that first half. She's back for more. Booth goes to Smite. Gets it away now for Plummer, who takes it down centre field 20 metres out. Left-hand side. Smythe going to the line, holding it up for Coleman. Coleman spots an opportunity. That's a bullet-like pass on the outside as well. And keeping her feet was Veya. She'll play it five away. New South Wales country hot on the attack. Coleman. Smythe once again. Good passing skills. And Eersman just takes a settler up the middle. Booth looks left, goes right. Now Coleman has no other choice but to dive on that one. So fifth and final. They go to Smythe once again who chips that down. But it was caught in goal. Says the referee will come back for a 20 metre tap. And good defence in PNG. Yeah, really great defence. It's nice to see that they've cleaned up those high shots as well. We know they can tackle and we know they can defend. Just that little bit of ill discipline earlier on which really will cost them if they continue it in the game. So Papua New Guinea trying to get some confidence going in attack. Esther Arum takes it up the guts. Dummy go there from Karua. So just one out stuff here from Papua New Guinea. Lacking that real punch thus far. And there was a stray hand in there and the referee's seen that. So this will help. Tap and go through Melly Joe. Again, big collision. Driven back in the tackle again. So Papua New Guinea through Kapo. On this right hand side. Joe spots an opportunity. Good tip pass out to Telti. Yolanda, she's someone that needs a ball more often, but she just. A little sloppy error in the play the ball there. And they turn it over once again. Yeah, I'd love to see a little bit more depth and shape from the PNG girls. It's all at the moment, just one out and tip-ons. We've talked about it earlier, and it, it seems to be becoming quite consistent where they're just struggling to get their uh, backs involved more in the game. It's, it's sort of just straight up the middle. and Very one-dimensional at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. But full credit to New South Wales country matching up in defence, leading by 10. Veya up the middle. It's Anthony Booth in the number nine, demanding quick ball, and she gets it out to Smythe, who. It's almost having a third playmaker out there, having. She's playing lock, but she's directing traffic, that's for sure. Yeah, it's almost like three halves make a hole with her on the field. Itaraka onto the field and crunches it up. They're looking slick with ball in hand. Can they finish the job here at the back door? And that's well picked up there from Glassy. She gets taken down just outside the tent. It's the New South Wales country. Now Smythe has a go herself. This will be the final... Coleman, who's very deep and puts the grubber through. The chases are coming. The bounce is an ugly one, but it's the perfect one for New South Wales country. 
I thought she may have dropped on the scoop, but she has got it down in New South Wales country. They extend their lead. Yeah, it was all in that bounce too, wasn't it, Jordan? I mean, there was a lot that came before that. But again, Smythe had an exceptional run before that. But the lovely little chip from Sarah Coleman to find, I think it's the 20 uh, for New South Wales country, who put the points down. Vea. But yeah, awkward bounce out the back. Unfortunately, the Papua Wind player just not high enough or tall enough to be able to reach that one. But a great kick from the half. Great inside as well. She saw that there was space out there and there certainly was a wide gap on the left side. Yolanda Talti, an absolute terrible bounce for her. She was there, but it just straight over the head. That's what the rugby ball can do sometimes. So New South Wales country, the perfect start in this second 20. Leading 14 points to nil. And once again, Sarah Coleman having her hands all over that one. And she sneaks that one inside the left hand upright. It's going now 16 points to nil. And here's that replay again. Lovely insight from the playmaker. And that awkward bounce, but a sensational bounce for the 20. More points on for New South Wales country. So 16 points to nil. A real positive start for this campaign for New South Wales country. And that was the Angie Tao. I think I might have said the wrong name there. The number 20 in the New South Wales country jumper. She's switched places with Gisela Vare who is wearing the three. Another penalty going against Papua New Guinea. Discipline really hurting. Mm. We'll see that uh, replay in the bottom right corner. And it, oh, it's, a, it's an ugly tackle from PNG. Glad to see that the New South Wales country player is unharmed. But it's just that ill discipline then. It, it, it's starting to really show the cracks are forming uh, for the PNG defence. As Smythe now, the captain, the playmaker, she does it all, running her team around the park, Pizzy Park. Strong performance, that is for sure. Getting plenty of support as well, and that's a, a grinding tackle, picked up and dumped from Kel Kelper. So Smythe, now the back door for Coleman. That's a, a tough pass to take, and the try scorer, she couldn't do it. It was a tricky one, though. I would have been really impressed if she was able to catch that one. She's already got four points on Angie Tal. But it was a bit of a bullet pass from her uh, teammate. But we've seen it before. You know what Tal can do in the space. So I'm not surprised that they're trying to do it again and replicate uh, the last try that earned them four points. But a bit too many wheat picks. So Papua New Guinea are going to have a chance. Really eager to get on the score sheet, that's for sure. Heading to day two action. Of course, one match coming up after this one. See the Australian Defence Force in action against South Australia to round out day one. And this is better from Papua New Guinea. Good, good passing and good skills. And for the final... Pass there, not going to hand, and another error does happen for Papua New Guinea. Yeah, we see the momentum build when they're starting to go more than just one out and first receiver. But she probably could have settled there, and they still had great field possession. She's just overshot that pass. Sometimes you get a little bit too keen when you find the space, and uh, you've got the momentum behind you. But a settler would have been nice on the 50-meter line, and they still regain possession instead. They're giving it over to New South Wales country who really don't need possession at the moment with 16 points on the board. I'm sure they'll take more though. Oh, they certainly will. They're hungry for it too. They're going to go down that left side again. We might see more points from the 20 tail. Explosive runner, that is for sure. So Booth now with ball on hand. 
Out to Smythe. Shapes a pie. That's a good dummy and go there from Smythe. And Rebecca is putting on a show here at Pizzy. Takes it down centre field. Options left and right for Booth. She goes right hand side and now tucking it back underneath is Almali who's back on the field. And now gets a penalty for a try as well for her efforts. Another hair pull. Big collision though. She's just bounced out of it though. The New South Wales country player Omali. But too many mistakes from the defence of the PNG girls. Sort of expecting more. Good defence there from PNG. They needed all four of them to take down Omali. And now the powerful front row of New South Wales country are trying to finish the job. Smythe had a look. And that one has gone forward to the referee. But good defence there from PNG. Getting up in the face, taking away that time and space, which you have to do against Rebecca Smythe. Oh, you do. And they forced the error. They finally put enough pressure on uh, Rebecca to be able to force the error. She's been uh, exceptional, and she still is. You know, she can afford one little error on the try line. I don't mind that. Um, particularly when you, when you, especially when she's playing like she is. But, yeah, a testament to the, to the PNG girls' defence to be able to get under the skin and force that error. Certainly hard to do with the skill level of Smythe. So now Papua New Guinea looking to run it deep inside their own half. But the defence has forced another error. It's bobbled out there for Leila Karoa at the base. And the pressure will continue. And there was a bit of a stray hand in there, ribbing that out. So lucky call there for New South Wales country. They'll take that. Yeah, great call. Uh, lucky call. We'll say great call. The fatigue certainly must be kicking in, though, for the PNG girls. They've been on the defensive for the majority of this game, I would say, not even just this half. So it's really starting to kick in, and you can see those errors coming through as well. But they're still doing a great job to be able to force errors for players like Smythe and, and defend the try line too. The Coleman now gets it on the right-hand side through Rankmore, the number 17, Booth, down the short side. And this is good play there from New South Wales Country, rolling towards the line. Here's Ryan, can't get there, should be forced to play it. About a metre short. And as the referee says, you hear in the ref mic, shooters are fine, they get up in the face and put plenty of pressure on. Smythe gets it away now for Rankmore, and again a big collision. But Rankmore does an excellent job there of keeping her feet and the ball in her hands as well. So Smythe showing, going. And now scoring just short, Rebecca Smythe. Very close for New South Wales country. And now winding up is O'Malley. And Papua New Guinea do well to stop her once again. Booth, Booth across the line. Has she got it down? And the ball is down, says the referee. And New South Wales country get another try on the board. This time through is Xanthi Booth. Great defensive attempt from the PNG girls, though. There was about five, four or five attempts there from New South Wales country before Booth put it over. They certainly love the contact. You know, they had plenty of space out to the left if they just swung it out to the number 20 who was out there, the try scorer, Tal. She could have gone over again, but Booth loves the contact. She was going straight up the guts. So New South Wales country now with a 20 to nil point lead. A couple extras to come and only a few minutes left in the second half here of the second last game for today. But make sure you stay tuned. Plenty more action to come in the following days. Uh, but kicking off next, we have the Australian Defence Force and South Australia. So plenty more action to come over the next four days. If you're in southeast Queensland, come on down to Pizzy Park. And Coleman makes it 22 for New South Wales country. 
giving Papua New Guinea to the blank score sheet thus far. Booth had some work to do to get that down. It was about six, I think, of the PNG girls around there. Really great effort, though. They brought about six players in every time. So fourth or fifth time's the charm, with Booth going over for some extra points. Certainly won't hurt. So there's the restart from Papua New Guinea, and guess who? But Rebecca Smythe <laughs> with her hands on that one. She'll play it inside the 30. Amali wrestled to the ground. She had good connection in attack. Have as I say that they. They drop it, but this game they've showed great connection in their structure, the set attack has been very impressive for me. Yeah, no, they're starting to do some tricky, some tricky things, some some cheeky little combos as well. I mean, they can afford to do it with a scoreboard like 22 to nil, but I think the team as they play, they develop as well because obviously they've all come from different parts of New South Wales, so this isn't a team that they've necessarily played with before. So the more experience they get, the more combinations they can start to see. So I think, you know, day two, day three, we're going to see some, some incredible quality of rugby league on display. Molawia feeds it in. It comes out the other side there for Mamanak. So Papua New Guinea get a penalty as well. Now we wanting to finish on the right note here. They can get a try to take into day two. Oh, that's a shot and a half right there. On Gapo. She gets back and plays it. Full credit to her as Sa. Centre field now. Papua New Guinea. What have they got in attack? Holding it up nicely there on the inside is Joseph. Takes it inside the 10. Play for the right-hand side. Kalpa gets taken down. Ball and all there from Coleman. Just five away. Papua New Guinea once again. Good passing. And then the offload out of the back door is a good one. Bow gets it away to Talti. And that pass over the top. Can't find the hands. It was all there for them. But not today for Papua New Guinea. Yeah, Trigon begging. The idea was there. I think that, you know, we'll come back tomorrow and watch it again as, as we see the replay. Lovely offload there before the bullet pass from the number four, Tawate. Ah, But that's all over. New South Wales country doing a job here on day one. Full-time score, 22 points to nil. See how it all unfolded. It was just one way traffic from the get go. It got started with Carly Abbott off that dangerous right foot, and they continued the momentum in the left hand flank. This offload here from Earsman was very impressive over the top. And Smythe being the consistent link in both of those tries and, and many more to come. She wasn't just involved in the two, but the halves and the playmakers, the number seven, there was that awkward bounce for Tile to go over. But the 6, 7 and 13 for New South Wales country, we just see over and over the key playmakers. But that was the uh, number 9 there. That was Xanthi Booth going over for the final points for New South Wales. So they'll take plenty of confidence into day 2. New South Wales country, 22, Papua New Guinea, nil.